All right, welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and it's time for us to spend uh, a quality time with kids. Basically, our doctor is on Skype with us this morning, Dr. Ayembila. And for you children watching out there, and for parents as well, allow your children to call in. We're answering all questions concerning COVID, even if they have anything else aside that that they want to talk about, but mostly about COVID. The numbers are on your screens right now, so please call us. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Bella. I'm it's doing good to very see well. You. You? I'm fine. Thank you very much. How's the situation um, in the UK at the moment? Um, well, uh, there's a bit of um, a silver, li silver lining to all of this because mm. um, over the past week, we have witnessed a decline in the number of um, deaths that are occurring as a result of the virus. So okay. um, that's some positive news. What, what about the children? Are we still getting more children infected by the virus? I think on a worldwide scale, the issue now is um, we have detected that actually coronavirus has a slightly different presentation in children. Mm. They may not be the ones to have your typical cough and fever. They might actually come down with some sort of, um, you know, general systemic illness. And oh, so we have to be more vigilant about it. Okay, hold on. Hold, hold on, though. Um, sorry, we have our first caller, Jeremiah from Shire Hills. And I hear he's 13 years. Hello, Jeremiah. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. All right. So, Dr. Ayambila is listening to you. So, I want to ask the doctor, since the coronavirus is a respiratory disease, can it be also transmitted through sexual, sexual, sexual activities? Hello. Okay. Gemma, how old are you again? <laughs> 13. 13. <laughs> I yes. see. Okay, doc. Yes, it's an um, interesting start. Interesting question. Yeah. Um, the, simple answer, the simple answer is no. It's not sexually transmitted. But then the sort of contact you have during the process could lead you to having the infection, you know, the intimacy, the kissing and all of that. But it's not sexually transmitted. Okay. All right. So, Jeremiah, um, I, I believe that that question, your parents probably gave it to you. But ask about <laughs> how it affects children. Doc, you were saying that it, represents, it presents itself differently amongst children. Tell us more. Oh, yes. I think in about, about three weeks ago, we did have a letter from Public Health England that mm. mentioned that um, we should look out for children having systemic features. Um, and we should look out for children who have um, all sorts of other symptoms like tummy aches, who have um, generalized body aches and pains, okay. and not just the typical cough and fever. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Aaron from um, Shire Hills. In Sawam, actually, on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Aaron, how are you? I'm fine. All right, Aaron, what's your question? My question is, can our Indian ginger bring down the... Can our Indian ginger bring down the... Aaron. Yes, please. Can, can we what? Bring down the, can the Arwintia and ginger. Arwintia and ginger. Okay. Can it cure coronavirus? Okay. Arwintia and ginger. I think Arwintia is the black thing that they put in cocoa, right? Yeah. I don't know what the, the English the name English. is. <laughs> We've called it that all our lives, sir. Eh? Yeah. Um, She's asking of the, that particular combination. Mm -hmm. um, we speak, there's no specific cure for the virus. Okay. At best, the ginger and the infantia may be, may be in a position to, you know, sort of keep your immune system on the alert, mm -hmm. but not necessarily being a cure. Oh, I see. So there's still no so cure. When, there is still no cure. All, All the right. treatment we give is to support your body to fight off the virus naturally. Mm. Okay, well, the numbers are still on our screens, and so kids call in. Dr. Ayambila is on the line, and I have another caller from Dawenya. Hello, Lois. Hello, Lois. Yes. Good morning, how are you? Tell us, what's your question? I'm fine. We're listening to you. Okay, um, I want to ask about the Sobolo. Sobolo, okay. Does it also help fight the virus in the immune system? Okay, Doc, Sobolo. <laughs> Sobolo, it, it reminds me of uh, my friend's Stoneboy song, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, at best, as I've, as I've maintained so far since we started having these discussions, at best, it may 
increase your level of immunity, but it's not a cure. Mm. So Sobolo is a good product for boosting your immune system. But Honestly, it's, it's good for consumption. You know, a lot of the fruits and vegetables we have, um, Bella, and plant-based drinks are very good for the immune system. So we could take them, but mm. that, that shouldn't lead us to being complacent that these are particularly cures or they would sort of prevent us absolutely from getting the virus. Oh, I see. Okay. So you can take the Sobolo and exercise and be fine, but that's not the cure. Do children have to exercise too? Oh, yes. We, we, children actually do have to exercise um, the thing is, you know, since this um, pandemic started, all the focus has been on adults. No one has spoken about children per se. But research has shown that childhood obesity and inactivity actually makes them more prone to having severe forms of the viral infection. Uh, and so children should they need do some to. amount of exercise. Okay. But then in the Ghanaian context, when you say children should exercise, they go out and want to play with friends. So That's the thing. You would want to find Yes, you would want to find a fine balance. We'll, so, we'll break it down so you show us what kind of exercises children can do. But Emanuela from Koforidria has just joined us as well. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Emanuela. I hope you're well. Doctor is all ears. Um, please, I want to ask if you have a severe headache and then you feel some pain at the chest, can it be a symptom of coronavirus? Mm. Can it be, in terms of probability, <laughs> in our Ghanaian setting, it's unlikely. You know, I'm choosing my words very carefully. It's unlikely because the typical presentation would, um, would, be, as a, would be sort of um, a patient having a cough with fever. So we expect that you would have some cough and fever. Chest pain could be, could not be, but in terms of probability, it's less than 1%, I suppose. Okay. So headache plus chest pains, it, it's not... Not necessarily. Okay. Okay. Not necessarily coronavirus, yes. All right. Why well, don't we wait for our next call? I, can you break it down? So for a child, what kind of exercise should I do? Okay, Pokea from Pekin Tampo. Hold on. Pokea is on the line. Hello? Hello, Pokea. I think we lost Pokea. So yes, the types of exercises for children. Yes. And so, Bella, as I, was, as I mentioned, not communal exercises, not our pilolo and not all the games that brought the entire community together. Yeah. I mean, if, um, if you live within a regular Ghanaian household, a little bit of walking around, mm -hmm. um, you know, a little bit of stretching is fine. Okay. Yeah. Not too much exercise, I suppose. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes a day for about four or five times a week. Of just walking or stretching. And stretching that helps to boost the immune system. Okay. It does. If our, our parents will end up sending us to go buy uh, tomatoes and onions anyway, so we are mm. still exercising. And, and all that children. is exercise. So then children should also allow themselves to be sent on errands. Of as long course. As it's safe. And necessary errands. <laughs> okay. Mami Sarah too has joined us. Hello, Mami. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. So doctor is listening to you. Please, I have a question about elbow shaking. If you're supposed to cough into an elbow, is it good to elbow shake? Okay. Oh, wow. That's, that's a very smart question. It's a very smart question. Um, yes, we are supposed to. We are encouraged to cough into the crease of your elbow. Mm -hmm. That is on one hand. And on the other hand, we meet senior personalities in society doing the elbow shake. Um, I think the assumption is the fact that there is um, some sort of anatomic disparity between the crease of your elbow and the major joint itself, that is the outer parts that we usually use for the shaking. What so the is, assumption what is, is that atomic that disparity? And I'm sure <laughs> the children are wondering, what is that? <laughs> I'm just saying, Bella, Bella, in simple English, uh -huh. in simple English, I'm just saying that the region you would be coughing in, uh -huh. supposedly is not the same point you would be shaking your elbows from because you'll be shaking with um, the bony aspect mm. of your elbow joint while you'll be coughing in the inner aspect so uh -huh. the assumption is that um you would have you wouldn't have a situation where we propagate the virus because yeah. of this contact okay now i've always wondered so should you also sanitize the insides of your elbow because if you're coughing into it you never know maybe someone might want to touch you even though we're still supposed to adhere to social distancing but you never know so i Good. cough maybe i have a daughter at home and my daughter is playing with my elbow should i always sanitize that area as well 
That's a very good question. And this always, well, we're always confronted by this question in the hospital settings. Mm -hmm. And so the assumption is the fact that, let's say you are in some sort of clothing, long or short sleeve, we would expect that probably as soon as you get home, before you get in contact with the family, you might be in a position to take off those clothes and take a quick shower. Mm. Um, sanitizing that particular region is not pr particularly very practical. And yeah. so we just restrict it to the hands and at best to the middle aspects of the arms, just okay. the anterior portion. All right, Daniela Sari, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, you're very energetic this morning. What's your question? My question is, can we use leaves to um We're listening. To uh, uh, that's a, a neem tree leaf. Okay. Neem tree leaves to cure coronavirus. To cure corona? coronavirus. Okay. All right, Doc. Bella, Daddy and question. Sam want to know. <laughs> you know, um, as a doctor, you are faced with um, a lot of um, ideologies with regards to um, medical practice. Um, of course, we all grew up having the neem tree, you know, in a bucket, and you cover yourself and inhale the steam, mm. and that would make you sweat and feel fine. Um, again, I would say that this could be supportive. This could be something herbal or something natural you'd want to engage in, mm. but it is not a cure. It's also not a cure. It's it, not it a cure. It might just help you feel better. Okay. But it's not a cure. Can it boost your immune system even when you inhale it? I mean, Bella, look at it a bit closely. Neem tree is rich in hydroxychloroquine, not so. And this is a drug that is actually being researched as a possible cure. Oh. Coronavirus. But then, as we speak, there is no correlation. There is no scientific correlation or evidence. Okay. To back so at best, it will just probably help you with your immune system, but it's not a cure. All right. Abba is calling us from Dan Soman. Good morning. Good morning, Bella. How are you, Abba? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm fine, thank you very much. So, doctor is listening to you. Okay. Please, I'm here to understand that a virus is not curable. So, it will still be ill, but I want to ask that those who have recovered, do they still have the virus in them? Mm, okay. Doc. Oh, that's a lovely question, and the, the grammar is impeccable as well. Yeah. So to go straight to her question, she has a point. Viruses are very difficult to cure. And so as we speak, the virus itself would be cleared by the body. Mm. That's what we assume. And we would want to confirm this by having two negative tests within a space of 14 days after you've recovered from the symptoms. This is very technical. Mm-hmm. So the simple answer to her question is, we obviously do believe that someone who tests negative no longer carries the virus. Okay. But then over the past two or three weeks, we have noticed that a few people, even though have recovered, may still be carrying certain fragments of the virus. And so it's conflicting evidence as we stand. Yeah. We are 80% certain, or let's say 90% certain, that your body will clear of the virus and you become negative and then you can go home. And so there will be no need for any form of stigma. Okay, and that means that you cannot pass on the infection to someone else. To the right? next person, exactly. But the virus will still be inside you. That's the evidence we are beginning to pick up because now there's also the issue of once you've had coronavirus, can you have it again? Uh -huh. For some people, we've noticed that they have had one strain of the virus and are beginning to pick up, let's say, a second or a third strain. As we speak officially... Once you have been cured, I mean, once you have cleared the virus out of your system, uh -huh. you can go home and be with your family. You can't spread it to anybody. Okay. All right. Uh, That's the opposition. Okay. So I have an 11-year-old uh, who's just called in. Hello? Hello? Hi. I didn't quite catch your name. Natasha? Yes. Okay, please. Natasha. What's your question? Please, um, I wanted to ask that. I wanted to ask that when... Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Natasha. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Natasha, you are listening to yourself Please. on TV. Lower the volume and listen to us on the to phone. I wanted that when your temperature is 36, when your temperature is 37, does it mean that you have the... The virus. So what's the right temperature? To determine if you are safe, healthy, or you're sick, basically. Yeah. Is that the question? <laughs> she says if your temperature is at 37. 
Yes. Does it mean that you have the virus? Yes. You see, Bella, with, with COVID-19, the best thing is to be seen by the doctor and be examined fully. I would say this because when we started, the criteria was clear. You should have fever above 38.3, mm. a cough that is um, dry for, the, for three days, or a newly incessant cough that is persistent over a 24-hour period. That was the criteria. But now we have learned that up to 80% of people with coronavirus don't even have any symptoms at all to start with. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile the two? If you have a temperature of 37, it's not likely you have the coronavirus. But okay. then if you have concerns and you need to be seen by the doctor, then he would look at the entire clinical picture and decide if you need to have a test or not. Okay. So let's just say I'm not showing any symptoms, but my temperature is 38. Should I be worried? Yes. In Ghana, in and your temperature is 38 in Ghana. Uh -huh. Is there a cough? Would you, do you have a cough or not? Yeah, what if I don't have any of those things? I don't have a cough, um, nothing, but then my temperature is high. You would probably end up in the hospital because the um, temperature being 38 is enough to cause you to have all sorts of other mm. symptomatology, shivering and all of that. So okay. when you get to the hospital, you may be asked to do a test. I see. But then don't forget that malaria and other infections also cause your temperature, temperature to go to up. Rise. Okay. Jason from Teshi, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. All right, please, Jason. Please, are uh, asthmatics at risk of coronavirus. Mm. I'm worried because my mother is a midwife and, can, and an asthmatic. Okay. Yes, and on that note, um, a big thank you to all nurses and midwives. Yesterday was International oh, Nurses, nurses Day. So we yes. appreciate them greatly. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, well, if you are asthmatic and you do get the virus, the coronavirus, your your infection might be more severe compared to someone who is not asthmatic. That is a point. But then I believe um, his mom being a midwife is taking the necessary precautions, is wearing PPE and really taking care of herself. And so all things being equal, he shouldn't be any, um, at any particularly increasing risk of having the infection relative to any of his other colleagues. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I have Bella on the line. Hello? Hello. Hi, Bella. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. So what's your question? I'm asking that... Hello. Bella, I can I'm listen fine. to I can hear you. Turn down the volume of your TV set, okay, so you can hear me directly on the phone. Hello? Hello, I'm asking that. Mm-hmm. Bella. Hello, can Bella. You, can you be cured completely? Okay, can you be cured completely? Doc touched on that uh, short while ago. Can you be cured completely? Okay, I'll just let him brush on yes. it again yeah you can recover completely from COVID 19. Mm, yes you can yes okay doc now before we even get our next caller so there was also another article that talked about children coming up with other kinds of ailments as a result of coronavirus and um this was a different kind of sickness that had you know come up i want you to touch on it i'm sure that you have some idea uh what exactly it is i'm asking you about well, Bella, you know, it's, it's, it's been quite um, a difficult period working with COVID-19 in general. It's very enig enigmatic. It's a medical conundrum. It's a big problem. It's, it's one that we as doctors are really saddled with and has made our work particularly difficult in these times. Mm -hmm. But that being said, what you have said is entirely true. Initially, we thought it was all cough and cold. We thought it was all fever, feeling unwell and recovery at the end of the day. But then, as you've rightly stated, barely three weeks or four weeks ago, we've had so many articles saying that children have different, different presentations. You have some children with diarrhea and it's coronavirus. You have children who are vomiting without fever and it's coronavirus. It is. Okay. Yeah, so it's, 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 a, it's a bit of um, a medical situation that we are trying to okay. um, grab with entirely. All right, yeah. hold on, Doc. Ruben from Nandom has joined us. Hello? Hi. Good morning, Ruben. What's your question? I said that. Uh, mm hmm. I said. Uh, I said that. Then my question is like: If your mother is having COVID nineteen, and you, and your mother is pregnant, so that means your baby is having COVID nineteen too. <laughs> 
<laughs> so cute, right? <laughs> so, okay. Honest, so. children, children ask the most thought-provoking questions. I, yeah. I bet they do. And so I think she's asking if um, if a mother is COVID-19 positive, will the child have COVID-19? Yeah, can they pass question? it on to their baby in their womb? Yeah. Yeah, this this prelim the preliminary research keeps telling us that it's not blood borne. Ah, but then okay. you know, recently we had the case of the Ghanaian nurse who unfortunately got COVID while being um, pregnant. Yes, and Bevan unfortunately passed away. Uh -huh. That was tested positive. Oh, the child so, tested positive. Oh yes, and so now the question is, could it have been as a result of other forms of contact because the baby was in contact with the mother before? Unfortunately, she passed away. Mm. Or could it have been the case of some sort of in utero transmission from mother to child? Oh. And again, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that is ongoing. You know, you have a disease that has not happened before. And so as we are treating, we are learning. Mm -hmm. I don't think there has been any point in history where we've had to be so, so confused about any particular illness. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. thought they said that it cannot cross the placenta. I mean, there's that something... Is what we know. I mean, you know, there's always the official position. Cannot cross the placenta. But then every day, day in, day out, we keep getting articles and pieces of evidence that make us want to rethink what we believe. But as we speak, it does not cross from mother to child. It's not sexually transmitted as well. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. So we're still hoping that a lot more of you can call parents. Give your phones to your children. Let them call. We're getting some very intelligent questions today. And Dr. Ayambila, is, uh, he has all the time uh, to give those answers that you cannot give to your children. And so let them call in and let's hear more about it. Now, um, the youngest person that died, unfortunately, according to the uh, press you know, release yesterday, is nine years old. And so that means that we can still have children as young as what? Can we even have babies also possibly dying from COVID? Yes, it's, it's, that's the case now. Um, now, COVID is no longer the preserve of the older people um, as we initially thought it to be. And now we're having children three years, four years, toddlers as well having the infection. The initial assumption was that, you know, Bella, you know, I think you know chicken pox, for example. Yes. Yes. Chicken pox is very mild in children. It doesn't cause, I mean, no one ever really dies from chicken pox. And then it's the adults, rather, who have very severe forms of the disease. That's what we thought, only for us to be proved wrong. And now it's noted that children are also equally dying from COVID-19, young people as well, both athletic and not. So is it the same kind of, okay, well, I, I think I have Pope. Nicole, Nicole is on the line, so she'll ask a question, then I'll come in with mine. Hello, Nicole. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, and I'm you? listening to you. Nicole, go ahead. Hello, Bella. Hi, Nicole. So, doctor can hear you as well. So, ask your question, okay? I have heard that Ghana has rich community. I have heard that Ghana has rich community. Nicole. Okay. Rich community infection. Uh huh. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and, and yeah. And doctor says. And that's what says. Okay, where's well, that? That says we should run around for our parents. <laughs> oh, <laughs> as a form of exercise. If we are not putting ourselves at risk, okay, by running the errand. <laughs> I see. Well, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, so, as you can see, we are in the Supreme Court. Uh, yes. Our children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doc. Yes. You see, the thing about COVID-19 is it affects every, every aspect of life, economically, socially, you know, culturally as well. So on one hand, we need children to exercise and stay fit. On the other hand, there is community infection, as she has rightly said. So then all we have to do is to find a balance. Mm -hmm. We want children to do a little bit of activity, just a little bit. But that does not mean that they should end up in um, Atu and Manse's house and um, Kofi's house and end up playing for long periods of time. So yes, there is some community infection that is ongoing and spread that is ongoing. But I mean, of course, just a little bit of activity wouldn't really be a problem. Okay. So just be yeah. safe. I mean, parents, you also should make sure your children are wearing their mask and all of, all of that, right? But anyway, exactly. Jessica Thank from Kumasi. That portion. Okay. Okay. Jessica. 
Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We kept you on the line for a while. Forgive us. Um, so I guess that's that should be about his dog. I was just going to ask a quick one before you go. That So you're saying that children can die as well. What we know from adults is um, it gets really bad that they have to put you on a ventilator and all of that. Um, we pray no child dies anymore. But just in case they also get to that point, will they also have to be put on a ventilator? Yes, Bella. Um, you're dealing with a virus that causes you to have an increased need for oxygen. And so in its purest form, it does cause you to have some sort of oxygen deprivation and hunger for oxygen. And so it may be the case that one or two children, unfortunately, may end up in intensive care, mm. would have to have intubation and life support for a period, hoping that uh, in, this, in, in all of these um, procedures and maneuvers, the patients would recover and mm -hmm. go back home. So yes, that's right. the case. All right, Dr. Faisal Ayem Bila, um, thank you so much for speaking to our children today. It's been very enjoyable, and we hope you stay safe. We'll definitely yes. see you, God willing, next week uh, to answer some more questions. And yes, thank you very much. Good morning, Ghana. All right, definitely. And so, 